So we're now ready to turn our attention to one of the most complex patterns in the Gang of Four, Four book, which is the visitor pattern. And what we're going to do here is we'll start off by explaining how the visitor pattern is applied in our expression tree processing case study in order to be able to enhance the extensibility of operations. We can make it possible to add new types of operations to our expression tree processing without changing anything in our structure or existing implementation. And that's very cool. So what we're going to do here is use visitor to decouple the expression tree structure from the operations that are performed on the expression tree. And that'll allow us to have an extensible set of operations on the tree without requiring any changes, any surgery, any modifications to the tree itself. That will stay the same as it always is. So uh, ideally, you'd like to be able to have a solution where you can add new operations to an expression tree without changing anything about it. So what, what does that mean concretely? Well, you might have operations like print all the values of the nodes in the tree. You might have operations like evaluate the yield of the nodes in the tree. You might say conduct semantic analysis of the nodes in the tree. You might do code generation or optimization. There's all these different things you might want to do on the tree structure. And we want to be able to make a design that's open-ended to allow those kinds of enhancements without having to go back and modify the internals or the API of the expression tree itself. So, so one way to do this, one way to extend things would be to go back into the expression tree class and add new methods. Every time we wanted to do something new, we could say print, evaluate, optimize, analyze, generate, whatever. And we could do that, but that would require changing the API of expression tree. And that of course would be a serious flagrant violation of the so-called open close principle, which we talked about before in the context of things like the strategy pattern and the bridge pattern and so on. So that's not a good idea. Another thing we can do is we could kind of hard code dynamic casts to access the contents of expression tree nodes. But that has other problems. It limits extensibility. So you can see here's a an approach we talked about earlier when we talked about the iterator pattern. And I showed how you could use a dynamic cast to be able to take a look at the elements that were in the tree. And whenever you saw an element, you'd say, well, is this a leaf node? Is this a, a, a composite add node? Is this a composite um, divide node, whatever. And the problem is whenever you start putting down casts or dynamic casts in your code, it's just asking for trouble because you're tightly coupling yourself to a particular solution. And it's really no better than a switch statement or an if else chain. In fact, you can think of downcast as basically like expensive and ugly and non-flexible switch statements and if else chains. So what we want to do instead is we want to create a hierarchy of so-called visitors, each of which defines overloaded visit methods that know how to perform operations on each expression tree node implementation, each subclass of component node in particular. So leaf node, composite add node, composite divide node, and so on and so forth. And so rather than having to go and change the contents of our expression tree and our composite and our bridge abstraction, instead we're going to go ahead and have visitor classes, a base class called visitor and then various subclasses that will know how to visit each of the different types of nodes in the expression tree composite. And you can kind of see a high level view of it here. Then what you're going to do, and we've already done this, so I've already talked about this, you're going to define an accept method in the expression tree class abstraction in the API. And that's going to be passed an instance or a reference to a visitor implementation. So as you can see here, we've got expression tree that has an accept method that takes a visitor reference. And when you call the accept method on the expression tree, what it does is it goes ahead and forwards to the appropriate and corresponding instance of the subclass node in the composite expression tree itself. And you can see here, for example, let's say just for sake of argument that we were pointing to a leaf node. Uh, if you say accept visitor on the expression tree, that'll forward to the leaf nodes accept method. And if you go back and, and rewatch the bridge 
video and look at the motivating example, I, I show the same thing there. This is just recapping that. So let's take a quick look at how you might write this. Let's say we have a factory method that makes a visitor. So we're gonna make ourselves a print visitor. And then we're gonna go ahead and make an expression tree with the expression minus five times three plus four. And now we're gonna go ahead and iterate through the expression tree in post order. So we use the, the factory method pattern to make ourselves an iterator. And every step along the way, we're gonna say, hey, iterator, uh, give me the instance, which is the, the node we're currently pointing to in the iteration traversal, call the accept method on that and pass in the reference to the print visitor. And that, of course, under the hood, will then go ahead and forward to the corresponding component node implementation that corresponds to whatever kind of expression tree node that we're really pointing to. So here you can see we're applying the factory method pattern, um, probably the interpreter and and builder pattern with our make expression tree creational method. We're using factory method to make an iterator. We're using iterator pattern, and then we're calling the accept method, which is part of the visitor pattern to visit every element. And notice that there's no need for downcasts here. Unlike the solution we looked at before, where we had this ugly downcast that hard coded knowledge of the tree's structure into our program. Down here, as you can see, we're abstracting all those things away, and instead we're just passing in a visitor, and the visitor is going to use the magic of double dispatching in order to be able to carry out the operation properly. And we'll talk in a second about what double dispatching is. So here's what happens. This is actually double dispatching. So the accept call uh, that's called on the corresponding subclass in the component node hierarchy, which let's just say for sake of arguments, leaf node, just to be concrete, its accept method will turn around and take the visitor that was passed to it, and it will say, hey, visitor, come visit me. So it says visitor.visit star this. And what that does is that goes ahead and will call the appropriate visit method defined in the visitor abstract base class, which knows how to visit a leaf node. And we'll look at that in a second, because that's really important to understand what's called double dispatching. So there's a bunch of different indirection going on here, but the long and the short of it is that this allows us to avoid hard coding operations into the expression tree nodes in the composite hierarchy. And it also eliminates the need for dynamic casts, and which is called downcasting. We'll talk more about double dispatching in a second. You can read more about it this, at this link. So this is what happens when we do this. What happens is this visit method will end up calling the appropriate visit method on the visitor interface, which of course, in this case, because we used print visitor over here, we made a print visitor, that'll end up actually being implemented by a subclass of visitor. So we override visitor with print visitor. The visit methods are all dynamic methods, and therefore it'll go ahead and do the dispatching on the appropriate visit method in the subclass instance of the visitor base class. So this is what's uh, basically a combination of, of dynamic dispatching through virtual methods like visit while combining it with what's called static polymorphism, which is just a fancy name for, for method overloading in order to be able to select, have the compiler select the right visit method to call. So all the methods are called the same name, they're all called visit, but the compiler can statically select which one to call based on the type of the subclass of component node that's invoking the visit method, which in this case, of course, is leaf node. So it's gonna call the leaf nodes visit method. Okay, so let's just take a kind of a big picture view of what this looks like in terms of C++. So we're gonna have the visitor abstract base class, and as you can see, it's got all these visit methods. They're all defined as virtual. They're all defined as pure virtual, so they don't have implementations. We require the subclasses of visitor, like print visitor or evaluate visitor to actually fill in the implementation. And the visit methods, as you can see here, are all overloaded by different concrete types defined in the expression tree composite. So each overloaded visit method is defined uh, or there's an overloaded visit method 
for each implementation of component node, for each subclass of component node that, that is interesting, that, that actually does something. So leaf node, composite negate node, composite add node. You notice we don't have composite binary node and composite unary node. Those, those are ignored, but or com component node for that matter. But all the ones that actually do something interesting in the context of the expression tree have corresponding visit methods that are defined as pure virtual. So from a commonality point of view, we have a common set of visit methods, one for every subclass of component node, and then subclasses of visitor define specific behaviors for different types of visitors. So here's kind of what this looks like. We have the visitor base class, and then we have different subclasses, print visitor, evaluation visitor, and so on. And that way we can add new capabilities to our object structure, to our expression tree, add new operations to it without changing the contents or the API or the implementation of the expression tree composite at all. Instead, we push that into the subclasses of visitor. 